Hello and welcome to Python for Engineers. In this particular course, or this playlist, um, it will be like a course. We're going to start by calculating basic things like areas, which you can easily do in Excel, but Excel is 2000s. Python is the future. Leave Excel to the old farts. Python is what will make you separate you from everyone else. This is what makes you unique. You can use both and you'll be able to do so much more in the future. Furthermore, uh, Excel has a lot of problems that Python and Jupyter Notebook don't. So I'm just going to give you a little preview of what we'll be able to do and there will be so much more. We'll be able to calculate moments of inertia. Um, university distributed loads on beams and that is not even as hard as it sounds it's actually literally two three videos down the line we'll be doing that because I'm gonna start you nice and easy with areas just as we did in school in school we learned how to calculate areas then we cal calculated volumes then we did went on so on and so forth until we got to university level so don't worry if you don't understand what's going on here this is not a lot of work and I can calculate the area, volume, and the maximum load, sorry, the maximum moment on a cantilevered load. You, let me just launch my diagram. Uh, if we go to the section view, um, let's, let's assume for all of these beams you wanted to know the maximum moment if one particular force is applied to all of them. So let's say 40 kN acting down here on the end and uh, we have the length should be Z mm. um, we want to know the maximum moment for each one and they all have separate lengths so what did I do I have created some data here if you want to know how I created it this is the formula you put in Rand between 110 times 100 that gives me the uh, sorry the um, ooh. My webcam keeps falling. Um, that gives me, I'm using my phone for it, that gives me a random number, I'm assuming it's in millimeters, that, that's my assumption I'm making, and because that's how we measure beam cross-sectional area, and the y-axis is my y-axis measurement, I'll go here to 3D, so let's say this is my beam, the X represents the distances along here, Y represents the distances along there, and Z represents the length in meters. So these two are in millimeters, that one's in meters. And so to create this one, I just created, used rand between 1 and 10. It gives me a random number between 1 and 10. And just remember when you press enter, or when you do this, they will all change. Um, you can copy them and just paste just the values in a separate spreadsheet or in, in the same place. Um, and not take the formulas forward just to let me just show you how this works so I'm gonna uh, run it slowly there is my data oh so the data changes changed so I'm gonna save this and then I'll run it there you go so it's updated the data it updates it instantly um, and then this calculates all the areas in meters squared with one of the modules that I've made that I'm gonna teach you how to make and then this calculates all the volumes based on those areas. We could also create a separate uh, tool that will multiply this, this, and that. Sorry, the X, Y, and Z, instead of just using the area that we calculated in the volume. Anyway, then maximum cantilevered moment, assuming, sorry, I'm assuming the cantilevered. And now that's all great and all, but how are you gonna make this, adapt it for all the people living in the old, old times of Excel? Um, they're not going to be able to use this, so I've got a special function here, a cell here that says export to Excel in this location here, and that will be, whoops, it will be named Beams3, and then remember to put the file type at the end. Anyway, let me just show you the folder, Beams3, have I got a Beams3 in there? No, there's no Beams3 in there right now, so there's your proof. Shift and enter, and there you go. There is Beams 3. Let it load, and here is all the data that we just created. So, just remember this is a skill you need if you're an engineer. Uh, Jupyter Notebook is predominantly used by data scientists and data analysts. So, 
I have found a use for it. I'm sure many engineers have found a use for it. This is much better than Excel, and this will take your Python skills to the whole next to a whole new level if you're still learning. Um, because it will create function, you'll be creating functions that you can literally use and reuse over and over again. So, just so you know, you may say, "Oh, some of these things I can do them faster in Excel." It's not about that. It's about um, learning them so that you can do it just as fast as Excel. But the power you have going forward will be more than the old guy next to you who's still stuck in his Excel days. Python has so much. Um, so many advantages. Um, so please check the following videos in this playlist if you're watching on YouTube. Um, check the link in the description below for any important videos. Um, if you're new to Python, maybe you should watch this. If there's something you don't know, maybe go somewhere else and learn that. Or check the links in the description. I may have some good useful links there. And then come back to the video. Um, but yeah. Uh, stay tuned, there's more to come.